What's up? This is Boxing Wave. Today I'm going to speak on the Gabriel Rosado versus Peter Cullen fight and the Bernard Hawkins fight against Marat. Uh, I didn't watch both fights live. I did watch the Ros Rosado fight um, live last night, but I didn't watch. Uh, I just now finished watching the Bernard Hopkins fight. So I'm going to speak on Rosado versus Quillen first. I'm really disappointed that I know I predicted this fight to go with Quillen with the win um, by decision or cut in the later rounds. I know I predicted that to happen. I'm very disappointed because as I said in the prediction video, I think Rosado is the, a, a better boxer than Peter Quillen. I think Peter Quillen hasn't shown me that he is a real true top middleweight fighter. You know, I, I'm not impressed with his resume and I haven't been impressed with his last few fights that he's been in. I mean, I thought the fight with Indom was uh, entertaining, but I wasn't really impressed by him. I, I, I really think he, you know, he has some good power. But outside of that, I'm not really impressed with anything that he has. So with that being said, I thought Rosado was overall the more solid, more. Um, uh, he was just the overall better boxer. OK, and I thought. He's definitely capable of beating Peter Quillen. And I thought maybe that he might have, you know, won this fight and pulled off the upset. You know, and this is why I didn't want to make a video because I don't have much confidence, I'm sorry, confidence in Gabriel Rosado. And I don't think he has that much confidence in himself. Because instead of, you know, you're going in there, you've been robbed before, okay? You're going in there or you feel like you've been robbed before, okay? After every fight, you're complaining. You know, you know you have a bad eye. You get cuts easily. You've been stopped for it before. And you're going into this fight and you're fighting a champion saying, you know, you know what? Do whatever you got to do to win this fight, okay? He started off slow. He got knocked down early. And he had a slow start. He didn't really find himself until the end of the fourth round. Um... The overhand right worked with him, worked for him very well. He turned the fight around. He had Peter Quillen against the against the ropes often in the later round, the mid to later rounds, and he looked like he he could have knocked Peter Quillen out a few times. And I was you know I was hoping and ready. I'm like you know what he might really win this fight. Then the cut happens, and then they stop the fight. And not only did they stop the fight and give it to Peter Quillen, but when they showed the scorecard for the judges, you had one judge saying Peter Quillen won every round. Okay, not surprised by that. I already said they're not going to give you the decision. They're definitely not going to give you the decision. They're trying to make a star out of Peter Quillen. They're not going to give you the decision. So what do you got to go? You got to go in there and do what you got to do. Don't make the fight so competitive. Don't make it so close. I know that sounds easy for me to say because I'm not in the ring with him. But I really think Rosado is a way better fighter than Peter Quillen. But I don't have any confidence in him. Because he's lost so often. He's, I think he's comfortable with just being close, debatable fights with people. And being able to say, oh, I got robbed. No, you got to go all on out. You got to go all out. He should have destroyed Jay Leon Love. He's way better than Jay Leon Love. I, I want to say he's way better than Peter Quillen, but as the fight progressed, you see that he's actually better. He might really beat this guy, you know? And he was, he looked, he had Peter Quillen in trouble the majority of the fight after the fourth round. So. You know, he, he, you know, the fight's over. He's on in the ring, you know, saying that, you know, why they stopped the fight. They stopped it too early. I think they stopped it too early. The cut was worse. The cut was indeed worse in the Triple G fight, and they they didn't stop the fight. Um, it took a while for them to stop the fight, you know, but he wasn't fighting back. So it was, it, it, it made sense in that fight because Gabriel Rosado was just avoiding Triple G in that fight. So... You know, now he's screaming rematch. You know, he's not getting his rematch. All right. Um, and I said on Twitter, I was a little upset. So I said some things. Oh, he need to retire. You know, because he's always going to have this problem with the cut over his eye. And he's always going to get 
you know, robbed and get in close fights with guys and any opportunity, any big opportunity he gets, he gets, he keeps the fight so close where he enables himself to get robbed, you know, but this fight ended with a cut, but even if it went to the judges scorecards, the judges had it all for Quillen. So I'm like, you know what? I don't know what to do. I don't know what he should do at this point. You know, I, I, I mean, either retire or continue to be a gatekeeper for any up and coming, you know, middleweight. You know, that's that's. I think that's his only option. So um, as far as Peter Quillen, I would definitely like to see him fight Danny Jacobs. I said that a while ago. After Danny Jacobs had his last fight, I would like to see them fight. Uh, I think the fight in Brooklyn would be a, a perfect uh, marketing plan for the sport. It'll be, it'll be good for Brooklyn. It'll be good for Barclays. Um, it'll be a, a, a good fight for the middleweights um, that's on Showtime, you know, because a lot of the other middleweight, top middleweights are on HBO. So I, I think that would be a good fight. I would like to see that fight. And, um, you know, I'll speak more about that when that comes. Now, as far as Bernard Hopkins versus Marat last night, I was very surprised with the outcome of the fight. Um, fight was very entertaining. I, I thought it was going to be a boring fight. So, in fact, it looked boring as, long, as, as soon as it started because you watch the Rosado and Quinn Quillen fight, you know, these guys are young, they're fast paced, and you know, it's going back and forth, and then you go and turn, and then slow moving Bernard Hopkins comes in, and then first right away, even though I think Morat was the pressure fighter in the early rounds, you can tell Bernard Hopkins were landing the cleaner shots, and he was dictating the pace of the fight from, from jump, very early. Uh, he, typical B hop fight, you know. He frustrated Marat, uh, you know, with the clinching, and you know, turning around him when you know the ref was breaking him up, kissing him, going to this his uh, Marat's corner, talking to Marat's corner in the middle of the fight, and then punching him and beating him up right after. It was very entertaining to see. Um, the ref was a little harsh on Marat, I think, um, until he, until. Until B Hop fell down and he swung at him twice when he was sitting on the ground, uh, he could have easily got disqualified for it. But the ref, the ref allowed so much to happen on both sides. This fight, you can tell Marat got frustrated by B Hop early, but um, he definitely did too much when he punched after the break and punched him while B Hop was on the ground. I think, but not Hopkins already got in his head so. Um, other than that, Hopkins dominated him, um, but it was a very entertaining fight. It was a competitive fight. Uh, Marat had heart, you know, he stuck in there and fought it out. And, you know, b Hop looked good, you know, he looks good. I don't think he's the best light heavyweight. I think Adonis Stevenson is better um, heavyweight than Bernard Hopkins if they were to fight. But uh, Stevenson is on HBO, so, you know, I, I thought we see that fight happen. But Bernard Hopkins looked good, you know. I mean, I was very entertained for the fight. Um, I was looking for the knockout. I thought he did enough to try, you know, be to have been able to knock out Barat, and he just couldn't put him away. But it was very entertaining. He beat him up pretty bad. Had a nice cut over Marat's eye. Very entertaining fight. I, I, I'm very shocked because I thought Gabriel Rosado versus Peter Quillen was going to be the fight of the night, and I give it to Bernard Hopkins. He put on a show. Even him, you know, hyping the whole Mayweather thing at the end. Mayweather's not going 160 pounds, bro. He's not going to fight you. He's not going 160. He doesn't need to go to 160 pounds. Business-wise and just as a career, like, bro, Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather doesn't need that to take that risk, to jump to 160. He fights at 154 and comes in at uh, weighing 148 on fight night. You know, he, he doesn't need to go in there and go 160 pounds, fight 160 pounds. Bernard Hopkins came in at 178 pounds tonight. Floyd Mayweather is coming in at 150 pounds on fight night. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I don't really want to see the fight, honestly. I don't want to see two defensive fighters like like that fight. Bernard Hopkins is way bigger than Floyd Mayweather. I, I, 
It's not gonna happen. Let's be real. You know, I like the whole alien thing, but it's it's not gonna happen. Okay. Um. So that's pretty much it. I didn't speak on the Deontay Wilder fight because I'm gonna use a separate video, a special separate video to tell you how I feel about Deontay Wilder. But um, I'm gonna speak on that too. I'm gonna try to do a video right right after this one and speak on that fight. But uh, that very nice car last night. I enjoyed it. And um, just leave in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. About, you know, the Gabriel Rosado Quillen, let me know who you think won the fight. Do you think they should have cut, uh, stopped the fight as early as uh, as they did? Do you think that the judges' scorecards, what do you think about the judges' scorecards? And let me know how close you think the fight was. And also, Bernard Hopkins, I mean, let me know what you think about the ref and, you know, everything, all the antics that went on that fight as well. All right. So, uh, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter at wavy underscore 10. Thanks.